and we are live what's up guys we've had a very very interesting couple of days so far wanted to make this little quick video for you because well i've been having a lot of emails about it and i want to clarify some things so first like always some housekeeping stuff over here um if you can hear me in the chat box say yes i just want to confirm that my mic is working and uh, if you can see me, if everything's okay for latency and bandwidth. Okay, you guys can hear me. Cool. Okay, so I just want to, uh, great, great. So there's a couple of things I want to talk about. First of all, with the Bitcoin cash. So it was added on Coinbase yesterday and uh, it's gone up significantly and a lot of people are asking me questions of what is it should i buy it which i'm not going to give you a definite answer i never give definite answers well i used to but i don't want to do that anymore do your own due diligence however i do want to talk about a couple of things so what is it first of all um it's a fork of bitcoin but forked off by individuals and the thing with forks guys is a lot of people view it as bad Listen, the consensus of blockchain is anyone can do whatever they want. Hence the word consensus. If you and I want to get together and fork Ethereum and fork Bitcoin again, you and I can do it. And if enough people see value in that, and value is subjective, what is value? In this case of Bitcoin right now, it's a store of value as opposed to a means of exchange. And so if you and I fork Bitcoin with our own nodes, with our own code, and other people see value in using it, and uh, utilizing it, so not just using it, but utilizing it and seeing it as a store of value in some shape or form, then so be it. That's a consensus. It's a laissez-faire capitalism. And so the ideologies behind both the camps, both Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, is my way or the highway, absolutists. Uh, in nature, there is no such thing as my way or the highway in absolutism, absolutism. And that's a tongue twister. Um, there's homeostatic balances and relationships between all organisms. And if you look at capitalistic systems, true laissez-faire capitalistic systems, it is about, let me turn this off. Oh yeah, of course, it fucking, it is about competition, but fair competition. Um, and competition with adding, what the fuck? Competition with adding the best value for an ecosystem. So Bitcoin Cash, it came out earlier this year and uh, it promises to do something that Bitcoin is not doing. And basically what I tell people, let the best person win. So now you have these two different chains with two different developer groups, with two different, let's say, ethos and mythologies behind that. And for me, let anyone do whatever they wanna do and let's see who wins. So there's never one thing is better than the next thing. It's all subjective. Some people say, you know, for example, Ethereum is better than Bitcoin, that's subjective. Some people say that, you know, Monero is better than Ethereum. That is subjective. It, these are all subjective things. So you have to ask yourself the questions of what do you deem valuable and why do you use it? And what is your justifications behind why do you think that is valuable? What's the problem it's solving? Who are the developers behind it? What is the roadmap? How is the technology created? How is the technology maintained? Um, are they actually doing sound cryptography? Are they actually spending their time to make sure there's no issues in the code, uh, which there is always issues in the code. So these are key questions you gotta ask yourself. And so for me, I go always let the best person win, or in this case, ecosystem win, and we'll see what happens. In the case of Coinbase adding Bitcoin Cash, it's a no brainer, guys, they're exchange. They'll add whatever makes them money. Just think as a business, right? They're probably gonna add another 10 different cryptos and tokens in the future. It's in the roadmap. They make money off of every transaction. They'll, they'll be stupid not to do that. They're the biggest exchange in the world. Like literally they're onboarding like 100,000 users a day. Some like astronomical ridiculous figure. And they make a percentage off of every transaction. So for them, it's just common sense business to add different crypto on there, okay? So now I'm gonna kind of, uh, let's talk about questions right now. So that's, you know, it's not complicated. You know, Bitcoin Cash fork off of Bitcoin. They have their own vision and let them do whatever they ever do and let the best e ecosystem win.
Um, so this is an interesting question. If someone buys Ether right now and they do a hard fork, which hard forks are actually planned in Ethereum, so that's nothing new. Uh, if they do a hard fork, is that interchangeable? Yeah, you get both. So same thing like in Bitcoin, if you held your Bitcoin with your own private keys, or even if you didn't have your private keys for the exchanges, you would have equal amounts of the next uh, with, with the next fork. That is, if that fork had replay protection, meaning if you sold or if they didn't have replay protection, that means you have to pick which chain you want. If they did have replay protection, you have both. Is Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin the same? No. So Bitcoin Cash does not have SegWit. Bitcoin Cash has eight megabyte blocks. Bitcoin has SegWit. So it's a they pretty much took a, a script out of the header. So uh, I won't get into it. But anyways, and uh, they didn't change their block size. So there is a significant difference. What do I think of the Zero X protocol? I think they are a great team. I think what they're doing is much needed in the space. And I think more developers need to be working on top of Zero X and all the other decentralized exchanges. Um, I think the failure point of majority of crypto, and you just, I think it was today or, yes, or yesterday, I think it was a Korean or Japanese exchange got hacked. And it's going to happen all the time. You know, these their security protocols aren't good, and it's a center. It's a point of failure, right? This one center server that uh, hackers can go in and take the coins from. Kevin, Kevin states Bitcoin is more centralized now than ever. I wouldn't even look at wallets and hash rate. Well, what's fascinating is actually the people that own it. It's a very small percentage, but that goes to Pareto's principle. So there's natural laws the state certain distribution factors um even ethereum it's very similar so this isn't just akin to bitcoin bitcoin transaction fees kill softly so the thing is like at at its current state with segway only about 15 ish percent activated and majority of the exchanges actually don't have SegWit. The so majority of the wallets don't have SegWit. Bitcoin more or less is viewed as a store of value currently, regardless of cert what certain people say. So a consensus in a coin is a consensus of the public. Um, and the public is usually, it's not, it's not, the public isn't right. I would say the public dictates the perception, the use cases of something. Uh, in this case, Bitcoin is perceived as a store of value. So if it's a store of value, let's say I have gold, I'm not moving around gold on a day-to-day -day basis. So if I do have to move Bitcoin sometimes and pay a fee, which is still lower than any other fee, uh, you know, if I'm comparing it to gold or something else, that's the cost I pay. But if you are viewing Bitcoin as a currency used for trade on a day-to-day -day basis, then yes, it's ridiculous. And this is where Lightning Network second layer and third layer applications hopefully can, hopefully can come in and solve this issue um, with the transaction cost, with the mempool, with the hash rates, etc. Do I have any problems with my Nano? No. I have, I've had zero problems. I've, Nano, Trezor, I've used them both. They're great. Z zero issues. The big question is why has scalability not yet been achieved with Bitcoin given technology available right now? Well, Lightning Network hasn't been fully proven, so the technology hasn't been ironed out. Um, they have a different ethos in the Bitcoin environment, so it does take a little bit longer for things to be contributed 
Uh, you can just take a look at their GitHub profile. Um, more or less, I think a lot of businesses will dictate the future of Bitcoin. For example, let's say you and I, you know, Steam it, uh, they stop using Bitcoin. Open Bazaar is going to be taking, I think, Bitcoin Cash, if I'm not mistaken. I might be, but I think they are. I think businesses, uh, listen, I'm an entrepreneur. So as a business owner, you're responsible for giving the best experience for your customers. And so if that means switching over to something else because it's cheaper and faster and better for your customers, so be it. Um, and that's that's exactly what's happening currently. Will countries introduce their own cryptocurrency? I think so. I think, uh, well, first of all, blockchain technology is a perfect technology for governments. It's transparent. <laughs> Imagine you being forced to use, like, say, I don't know, the greenback as a crypto, where they know where you spend money, they know how much money you make, they know all your transactions, and they take a flat tax from you. Well, not flat, but they do take tax from you. You know, 40% of tax in the United States is unpaid for different various reasons. So imagine they just take it automatically from you. It's blockchain technologies for the governments is the most perfect vehicle possible. Hey, Amir, what do I think about EOS? Well, once I don't agree with their ICO at all. That's the most fucked up ICO I saw. It's just one whole year. Like there's so many issues with that. I don't even know where to start. Anyways, that being said, um, the technology, you know, they're using DPoS, delegated proof of stake. There are some issues. I mentioned this before. Maybe they're working on that. Masternodes are an issue, knowing who they are, and you can coerce these masternodes. Voter turnout, because within a delegated proof of stake system, the more tokens you have um, means the more voting rights you have. But like any political system, it's not 100% voter turnout. No, it's not. So within these systems, if you look at Pareto's principles and certain mathematical laws, maybe you only get like 30 people or 30% of people, 20 to 30% of people to show up to vote because the rest of the system or the, or the users of the network don't care to vote. And the uh, majority of these voting uh, syndicates will be formed, kind of like their own kind of cabal. And these syndicates will then dictate based on the fact that they have majority of the tokens to vote for certain masternodes. Now, maybe they're working on solving this. I don't know. I haven't investigated too much of my time on that, but those are some issues on top of my mind. Hey, Amir, is Vitalik's father involved in crypto as well? Yeah, he's my partner in Block Geeks. Where do I stand on Tangle versus blockchain? I don't stand anywhere. Let the best party win. My only issue with Tangle and IOTA is they roll their own crypto. So that's my, yeah. I won't get into that, but that's a whole different story. Cardano versus Ripple. That's like comparing a banana to an apple, two different things. Can we talk about Bitcoin Cash? We are talking about it. What, what would you like to know? Why is Bitcoin Cash rising? It got listed on Coinbase. Coinbase has ridiculous amounts of users. I mean, millions of users. Like, it's ridiculous. RDN token? Oh, what? I don't know what that token is. Maybe I do. I forget. What is my opinion on, on Zcash? I like it. Um, I like zero proofs, ZK Snarks and Starks. Uh, I know Ethereum is rolling out uh, uh, Snarks uh, soon in their next update. Um, Zcash is not meant to replace Bitcoin. It's very expensive and slow, like really, really fucking slow. But the technology, the, the cryptography, you know, they call it moon math. It's very, very beneficial for a lot of people. Uh, Patrick, as a developer, I have not seen many projects, which gets me excited. Your thoughts? Patrick, I concur. Their majority of the projects are crap. Uh, they haven't thought of the technicality behind it. They haven't even thought of fixing and solving a real problem in the world. They're money grabbing. And I'll publicly say that majority of the ICOs are crap. And they're just here to raise money because they couldn't raise money traditionally. And they want to get rich quick. And they have no technical 
uh, prowess or technical expertise, and they're solving something that does not need solving. Hey, Amir, can BT, this is from Jay, can BTC and BCH coexist? Sure, yes. Apple, Microsoft coexist. Many companies coexist. Hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of companies coexist. Huh? Indiegogo launching ICOs, yeah, but they're launching securitized ICOs, so they're going the, le the regulatory route. Listen, if you're doing an ICO that's a securities that may be attached to like some uh, equity or royalty rights or some type of, let's say, tangible asset, then sure, you're not kidding anybody. You're not saying this is a utility token and yada, yada, yada. You're literally just raising it, raising money or using an ICO as a vehicle to raise money. But that token is actually attached to something that represents something in the company, usually equity, dividends, uh, some type of return policy. Uh, it can be IP rights for something that you're creating. So I think Indiegogo is going to have some similar variations of that. What's my thoughts on Cardano? I haven't had time to research it. I don't think so. I'll have time until end of January. Will Bitcoin Cash be more worth than Bitcoin? I have no idea. Really, I don't know. Just remember, guys, Bitcoin's been here from day one. They literally have, if not the best devs in the planet. Like you have the, you have like, these are the caps. You have Bitcoin has amazing developers. Ethereum has great developers. Monero has great developers. Uh, Zcash has great developers. And there's probably like small other ones out there. That's it. Uh, for me, well, well, I don't see the developers in Bitcoin Cash yet. I don't. Uh, maybe there will be more in the future, but currently I don't see the same camp as Bitcoin. And going back to what I said originally, you know, Bitcoin's been here for eight plus years. They have the longest chain. They have the reputation. They have the developers. They now have a futures trading platform, soon to be an ETF. Uh, not just one place is going to be future, multiple listings around the world for futures. It would not surprise me if somehow Bitcoin's listed with some on the NASDAQ in the future. So I think the Wall Street money wants to go after Bitcoin as opposed to Bitcoin Cash. Um, but each has its place. All these same questions. What will Coinbase add it on next? They have a roadmap, Google it. They just released it. Yeah, I don't do price predictions, so don't ask me that, guys. I'm not a trader, I don't speculate. Quantum tech, yes, quantum. I actually met the guys in Singapore, well, yeah, actually, Patrick. I met Patrick and I met John. Solid team. I was very impressed with the team at Quantum. Uh, impressed with the roadmap. Impressed what they want to do. And for me, I give everybody credit. I'm like, let me just go see, you know, go out there, do what you got to do, produce, ship, add value, uh, actually solve real problems. So for me, I'm sitting back and so far I've been impressed with the team and I just want to see what they're capable of. Amir, do I play the guitar? No, I play the piano, level three or grade three. What problem is Monero solving? Privacy. And solving privacy in their own unique way with ring signatures.
any comments on Segway 2X? Isn't it dead? Like I'm, I don't keep up with politics, so I have no idea. What are my views on crypto cards? You don't need them. Why do you need a card? Like, we won't have any credit cards in the future. There's already Apple Pay. You have Google Pay. Like, what do I need a credit card for? I can use any wallet on here and pay anywhere I want. I don't see the use case for any credit cards, any physical cards whatsoever. And not to mention, you're they're running on Rails, so they don't own their own fucking Rails. They're running on Mastercard or Visa Rails, and right now there is there's no card yet out there mainstream that has Visa and Mastercard Rails. Uh, do you see China banning Bitcoin? Bitcoin's been banned every day, man. <laughs> it's all politics. Is proof of stake superior to other proof of work? Yes or no? It's all about use case. So I think proof of work, and I think mathematically and how it's structured, proof of work is very well suited for Bitcoin. Uh, how Ethereum structure with a virtual machine, uh, as it's the world computer, proof of stake makes sense. Now, there's issues with proof of stake, right? Um, long tail attacks, um, spamming attacks, coercion attacks, and then complications with sharding. Like there is issues with proof of stake, and that's why it's been taking such a long time to figure it out. And everyone has their own variations of proof of stake. Am I a burner? Never been to Burning Man, but I've been to a million raves, and yeah, so that's up my alley. Uh, what's my thoughts on Neem proof of, uh, proof of importance? I haven't looked into it, so I don't know. The only other proof I know is proof of resource. That's it. What's your thoughts on Tezos? Uh, they have to uh, fix their legal issues. So well, best of luck to them. Do you support charity? Funny you say that. We're having an amazing charity event actually this Thursday that I will be streaming live from. We're trying to feed 96 children for a year with the Covenant House. And we've just rigged up a Christmas tree that if you send Ether donations, the tree light will light up. And that will be live. And we're really trying to help 96 children, uh, give them shelter, give them food, uh, and help them out for one month. How can you make best use of BlockGeeks? Depends. If you're a developer, take all the courses out at BlockGeeks and uh, add value in the ecosystem. Uh, there's BlockGeeks is going through big changes in January. Like there's a lot of things where their own custom platform being launched, bounty programs being launched. Like there's a lot of cool things. Stay tuned. What am I looking forward to most about the crypto ecosystem 2018? Maturity. Uh, I'm also looking forward to a lot of these reality setting in where all these ICOs raise money and they don't ship because they can't deliver on their IOU. Um, also, certain second layer and third layer applications on top of root blockchains. So I think it's a very interesting year of maturity. How to use BlockGeeks if you're not a developer? Great question. We, in fact, just launched a basic plan, which is like super cheap, which actually helps people who aren't developers. Do I think EOS has what it takes to replace Ethereum? 
it's like me saying, "Oh, look at that sixteen-year-old kid over there. I think he had. I think he's going to replace that professional hockey player who's been in the NHL for three to four years. He could. The question is, he's still too young, and we don't know. EOS hasn't launched. They have no applications. They're still a baby. Ethereum's coming up, I think, north of three years now, roughly. Um, I want to see EOS in operation. I want to see them go through the same scaling issues that Ethereum's going through. And then once they're actually in the wild and operating, then we can come to a much more educated guess what's going to happen. Am I the best person ever? No, no. I'm the worst person ever. I don't even like myself. Yeah, don't listen to me. Any plans for block kicks to have in person? Not really. It deviates from us trying to help as many people in the world as possible. In-person training only helps people who are in our city. We want to help everybody, the unprivileged, the unbanked, anybody around the world who wants to become a dev and learn this technology, we want to help. Hence why we're totally online. Um, so many questions. It's hard for me to keep up. Um, am I planning an interview together with Ivan on tech? Nah, not really. I don't reach out to much people. I'm doing my own thing. If they reach out to me, sure, but I'm busy, guys, running a business. All right, guys, I'm out. That's the last question. If you guys enjoy this, leave a comment after this video. I'll try to do more of these Q and A's. I might take the Christmas holidays off. I'm very busy scaling block geeks, hiring more people, hiring a lot more people. And uh, I wish you guys best in the holiday. Have fun. Take care, and uh, see you guys soon. Adios.